Hi, welcome to EMC Test Design Radio channel. This is my second video related to modifications and improvements of Hodasen DX286 radio. Today we will be talking about improvements and design of the short wave antennas. So without further ado, let's start. In the first video, uh, I talked about modifications that were made to Kodasen DX286 radio. Let's briefly summarize what we talked about. First, quality of sound was greatly improved by adding two high-power stereo speakers with enclosed boxes and stereo amplifier, and of course, doubled capacity of the lithium-ion battery. Added equalizer to make sound more natural and extend lower frequency bandwidth down to 100 Hz. Also, on receiver side, there was improvement in adding dipole antenna instead of monopole antenna. If you remember my measurements in the first video, improvement on AM medium waves and FM was pretty substantial due to the ferrite bar antenna on AM which which is seven and a half inch long now and more resonant dipole performance in FM band. For short wave improvement was very modest about 3 dB but what we need to keep in mind because of dipole, we now have directivity of the antenna at short wave, and we have now a new capability to put a null on a noisy station or source of the noise, thus improving short wave performance. To remind you, every dipole has main lobe of directivity uh, orthogonal to its plane, and now in the plane. Therefore, there is a possibility either to maximize the signal, not much, or put a pretty deep now to offending noise source. In this video, I would like to show you how to improve shortwave performance dramatically. To do that, I decided to develop a loop antenna. Here you could see external loop antenna that I built. It represents 5 feet, 1.5 meter high quality RF cable with a break in a, in a shield at the upper point connected to a metal box. Inside this metal box there is a variable capacitor with capacitance, maximum capacitance about uh, 620 picofarads and amplifier with high input impedance. Here you could see in more details the design the design of this antenna. Uh, this antenna has shield break in order to be able to pick up magnetic component of the field. It's symmetric and uh, a shielded box prevents interferences from getting in. The main rule for such antennas is their self-resonant frequency must be outside of the maximum frequency you would like to receive. In this case I would like to have it at least 20 megahertz. There are two types of there are two types of uh, loop antennas tuned and untuned. In this case we use tuned antenna. Uh, this gives us a lot of advantages because instead of having the need to have a gain in amplifier, we get natural gain because of antenna resonance. Another difference in this antenna, this antenna from many others, that is shielded. Shielding is very important because many, in many cases, interference is coming from switching power supplies and electrical appliances are electric in nature, not magnetic, and having magnetic pickup allows you 
to get rid of these interferences and increase RF signal to noise ratio. Unfortunately, having this antenna with a shield creates a problem. This antenna was built by using cable and this cable has capacitance of about 20-22 picofarad per square per linear foot. Therefore, we get 100 picofarad capacitance which serves uh, us pretty badly because it requires pretty high external capacitance to be able to tune it in required frequency range from 60 to 19 meter bands. And another thing, it reduces its resonant frequency. Uh, and if this resonant frequency becomes too small, this antenna becomes unusable. Therefore, there are some design limitations in this antenna. Here is a little bit more physics of its performance. From Maxwell law of induction, we can calculate voltage developed by this antenna. In this case, I use, uh, for example, circular antenna of a certain area, certain diameter. And we can see that signal proportional to amplitude of magnetic field frequency, area of antenna, and number of turns. Resonant frequency can be calculated based on antenna inductance. And you could see that inductance is proportional to diameter of the antenna, some logarith weak logarithmic function of diameter, but most important is proportional to square of the number of turns. Therefore, making many turns, in many cases, it's non-productive because inductance goes up too far. Capaci capacitance rises quickly of antenna and resonant frequency gets into the band you would like to use this antenna. Therefore, in most cases, the best performance this antenna gives you if you have maximum diameter and only one turn. As I will show you in a moment, this antenna has remarkable performance, but it's big and it cannot be implemented as a, as a part of the small portable radio. But I would like to have antenna in my small portable radio. So I designed another variant of this antenna. Let me fold this dipole for a second. And this antenna is loop antenna built into this radio. It has area about 14 times smaller than this, than this external antenna. And in order to get desirable inductance, I use not one turn, but two turns. Another feature is, in order to minimize its capacitance, I do not use cable, because uh, all cables have approximately uh, the same uh, capacitance per foot, except very high ohm uh, impedance cables, which are kind of rarity. So here I use just pieces of isolated wire inside the tube. This allows me to reduce capacitance. This antenna through short cable is fed inside the radio where it also meets the RF buffer amplifier with input impedance of about one mega ohm. In this case, I use a little bit of gain. I use gain of two, but gain is not an issue here. Most important improvement will come from loop antenna magnetic performance pickup and its directivity. In order to prove that this antenna is fit for this job, I measured its impedance. To do that, I took spectrum analyzer tracking generator, connected it to this antenna, to one terminal and another terminal, I connected to input of, of uh, spectrum analyzer uh, receiver. This way, if my antenna has impedance much less than 50 ohm, I will get flat line at the level of approximately minus 20 dBm. The highest impedance of antenna, the lower is the, lower is the plot, and you could see that at frequency approximately 20.5 MHz, I have 30 dB down from minus 20 dB. It means that my impedance is 30 dB higher, that is about 30 times than 50 ohm, which means that uh, I have tunable antenna and this is in a case when no external capacitor is connected. 
if I do connect external capacitor, I use capacitor around 600 picofarad. You could see that its resonance went down below 5 megahertz. That's the smallest frequency my tracking generator can operate, which gives me enough frequency range to cover 60 to 19 meter bands. Now I would like you to practically demonstrate performance of this unit with whip antenna same unit with internal loop antenna and same unit with external loop antenna. So I choose some free, some station in 22 meter band and this is performance of this radio with whip antenna. The young people today need to be able to stand for what's right and for what's wrong. This is a pretty weak station, when you do that, you're going to and be I can read for my namesake. 16, 18 maximum to to dB micro. You for this. You to now I switch to magnetic loop antenna, and I will tune it. I don't believe, I don't believe the Bible is true. I'll, I'll tell you what, you want to test this? <laughs> Stand up and say, I'm a Christian, I believe in Jesus, and God loves all you. You could see that meter reads well, 36, 37 mm -hmm. dB microvolt, substantially higher level. Okay, we end right here. Isaiah 5:20. True. Now I connected external antenna. Have him put on the breastplate of righteousness. That means know what the Bible says and live level. it. Have your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. That means know how to tell people you the good news. Above all, take the shield of faith. This is exactly what I expected from uh, from this comparison. Whip antenna substantially outperforms whip antenna, but external whip antenna is much better. The main reason why it's much better, its area is bigger by 14 times. And of course, it has a little bit lower losses because it is removed from the body of the radio. In order to give you much broader picture of comparison between these three antennas. I measure their performance at various frequencies in a different bands from 60 to 19 meter bands. Here you could see frequency and on Y you have in dB microvolts, sorry it's a typo, in dB microvolts uh, the uh, signal level. Green curve is a dipole whip about one meter length Red one is a built-in loop antenna. And finally, yellow one is external loop antenna. You could see that uh, at 60 meter bands, around uh, five megahertz performance of the loop antenna and whip antenna are about the same, but external loop antenna is substantially higher, 20 dB higher. When frequency progresses, uh, loop antenna red bar outperforms whip antenna by 10 to 20 dB. And, of course, uh, a yellow bar uh, external loop antenna is, is even better. The reason why loop antenna outperforms whip antenna when frequency goes up is related to physics of uh, loop antenna pickup. If it was a resonance, then whip antenna would catch up very quickly, but because wavelength is still way, way higher than the length of the dipole, improvement of the whip antenna is pretty modest but improvement of the of their whip antenna is pretty strong one thing i would like to mention again that performance is not only uh, defined by the signal level but also by the presence of the noise if signal comes with a lot of noise no gain can help you to get a good signal. Therefore, having directionality of the loop antennas and whip antenna, by the way, too, compared to single, single rod, single, um, single antenna. Uh, this improvement is very substantial. And second one, because these antennas, loop antennas, are both of them are shielded, they are much less sensitive to switching power supplies interferences. Okay, finally, let me summarize what we achieved here. We started from Kodasan DX286 radio, 
by the way, all these uh, modifications could be done with any radio, not necessarily with this one. This one was chosen for few reasons. It has extremely good uh, digital receiver. That was known to me. Second, I did not know that, but it was pleasant surprise. It's pretty nicely shielded, so it produces not very strong, not very strong interferences. Uh, I measured that when this antenna is up, compared to this antenna is down, I pr it produces only one dB more digital noise in a folded position, which is perfect. It means it could be used even even when this antenna is folded down, which is pretty nice for portable radio. So we have substantial improvement <coughs> at higher frequencies, 31 meter bands and lower wavelengths. In this case, this antenna produces 10 to 20 dB more signal compared to whip antenna. And even at the 60 meter bands, this antenna will produce 3 dB better signal compared to single antenna and because of directivity and magnetic pickup it will give you another nice tool to differentiate which one you want to use depending on your receiving conditions so i believe uh, this video completes uh, the review of my modifications of this codesend radio which uh, i hope you enjoyed this is Roman Litovsky, MC Test Design Radio Channel.